My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, the Kegel 3 had just botched an attempt at a rendezvous burn with Min Miss Station after rescuing Gilly Kerman and her scrap from the surface of Min Miss. So I'm just time warping here to a second attempt at that burn to try and coordinate a rendezvous. Now, if you recall, the capsule that's strapped to the bottom of the lander is quite significantly throwing off the center of mass, so I have to keep my thrust under control. If I stay in around a third, you know, less than a third thrust, things work out okay. All right, let's let's see what we got here. Okay, let's burn a little bit further. And, whoa, wait, I, I overcooked it. Okay, I gotta spin around retrograde. Yeah, an unfortunate thing here is I had to push my apoapsis up about 100 kilometers, uh, 50 kilometers higher than my target orbit, which is an inefficient thing to do. But my encounter speed here is about 37 meters per second. I still have 94 meters per second left of delta V, so it should be okay. But that rendezvous is not going to be for another couple of hours. And in the meantime, I got something sitting on the pad. Oh, still loving that real plume. Actually, I think the thing I like just as much as the real plume is a, is a mod that comes packed with it called engine lighting, which uh, is what's causing that light to go up the engine. We have a bright light down there at the bottom, you know, because like fire emits light, right? <laughs> so it makes these night launches certainly much prettier to watch. Anyway, this is one of my Curuses. And aboard, you can see we have Bob and Chris, Nick, and Luya. And if that particular trio seems familiar, that's because two episodes ago, I brought them back down to the surface. <laughs> now I'm bringing them back up in what is obviously should have been an unnecessary launch. But uh, yeah, a couple of episodes ago, I was into this whole thing of I'm going to get all my Kerbals down to the surface before doing a whole lot of upgrading because I thought I'd lose vessels and then... That didn't happen, and well, now I'm need crew for future missions. So that was the whole reason they were up at the station in the first place. So uh, here they are, but they are actually not on their way to the station. They have another target in mind that I'll get to very shortly. That's because I just want to mention that in this episode, you will also be seeing another launch, the third launch of my space shuttle, the Columbia, which amazingly enough, hasn't been in service since episode 64. That's the last time it launched. Uh, I've made a few changes to it since then, but um, well, I'll get to that a little bit later in the episode. For now, let's get back to the mission at hand. Uh, I mentioned that these guys are not going to Kerbin Station. That's not quite true, actually. They will eventually get to Kerbin Station. They're just gonna make a little bit of a stop along the way, and that stop is going to be with the Karayan 1. This is a vessel that I abandoned in low Kerbin orbit a couple of episodes ago, figuring it was going to be uh, deleted once I removed TAC life support as a mod, and then I decided I wasn't going to remove TAC life support as a mod, so I think now it deserves to be refurbished and put back into service. The issue is, it is completely devoid of any fuel, so what we have to do is fuel it up. Now, the Curious has a 1.25 meter docking port at the front of it, but the Karine is only equipped with a 0.625 meter docking port. Uh, that's because this is an old vessel, and that's the only docking ports I had at the time. Uh, and I had been meaning to rectify that situation for quite some time and just never really got to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to snuggle up there beside it. Fortunately... The Karayan 1 has some KAS fuel pipe endpoints uh, that happen to be on it. I like to put these on my bigger vessels, so uh, we'll be able to connect it together with a fuel pipe and then uh, be able to transfer some fuel over. And then the idea is going to be to fly both of these over to Kerbin Station. At Kerbin Station, we'll be able to completely refuel and refurbish the Karayan, and of course, uh, we will get our three Kerbinauts more comfortably into the station at that time as well. Okay, so uh, why don't we get Chris Nick across to start connecting us some fuel pipes? You might have noticed there that um, the Kuryu's engine actually had a cover on it. That I've never noticed before. We'll get a little bit of a view of it right here, barely. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good shot of the animation of me 
opening and closing that particular shutter. I'll have to make sure to get a good shot of that next time. There we go. You can see the engine actually there. There's there's little doors. It's a really nice little animation and a, a viewer pointed out to me that I was missing that every single time I was using this Kuryu. So uh, thanks to that particular viewer. But anyway, we will connect the uh, pipe endpoints here across. There we go. And then we'll get into the process of pumping across a bit of the fuel. And what I figured I'd do is i just split the fuel between these two vessels. We don't have to go too far, so neither of them needs a whole lot of fuel. And then, of course, Chris Nick will detach the two vessels. And then we'll nudge them apart. And I think I'll send the Kuryus back first, get these guys back at the station. And then I'll go and send back the Karayan in. Well, hang on. Um, <laughs> look at the docking port here. Wait, wait. These two docking ports are the same. Oh, I forgot there was, yeah, I forgot I had the science module at the end of the Karayan. And that means I can dock these things together. Okay, well, that made that whole exercise kind of more complicated than it needed to be. Uh, let's just dock these two things together. And this, of course, is going to change the plan. We can fly these over there together. Okay, there we go. We have our encounter with the station, but the uh, burn itself is not going to be for another four and a half days or so. They still have plenty of life support, so uh, they can easily wait it out. And we'll get back to them in a future episode. Right now, though, I think it's time to get back to Minmus and the Kegel 3. So we are about five minutes from our closest approach of about 400 meters. Relative velocity of 35 meters per second, and we still have 94 meters per second left in the tank. This should be pretty routine at this point. Everything is looking good. So, see if we cannot close that closest approach just a little bit. Select the close approach indicators. And we'll burn a little bit. And, oh, that increased that increased the distance. So I guess I got to burn the other way. Try again. Oh, that's increasing the distance too. Okay, how about this way? Oh. <laughs> okay, I have now done all. Let's do this one. That'll do all the compass. Nope, still increasing the distance. I don't really understand what is going on here I seem to be trying no matter what distance I go what direction I burn I'm increasing my closest approach distance so instead of 400 meters now it is just a little under a kilometer why don't we time warp get closer maybe I'll watch the uh, our retrograde vector and our retrograde target icon on the nav ball see what they're doing might give me a clear indication of which way I need to burn Okay, we are under two minutes from our closest approach. And now oh, that's still that's still increasing my distance. I'm now at a kilometer. What is going on here? Where is it's over there? There we go. Still three and a half kilometers away. Okay, let's get ourselves closer still. See if we can get this to make some sense. All right, we're only a minute away now. Even looking at it now that we're zoomed in close like this, I can see that I'm going above the station. I'm going above the station by about a kilometer. Okay, let's select this again. Okay, my relative velocity is over 35 meters per second. I gotta start bringing that down. Come on. Yeah, okay, at least that, that my relative velocity is now at least coming down, but my distance is on its way up. Oh my gosh. Stop again. I am so confused. Again, that's bringing down my relative velocity, but increasing my closest approach distance, which is now at 1.2 kilometers. 
This shouldn't be that complicated. I just feel like I'm shooting in the dark. My relative velocity is very low, but I am missing the station. This is not, not working for me. Okay, we're coming over the pole now. I can see how the stuff's moving around on the nav ball. Like, let's just burn straight at the target. Burn straight at the target here. We got to get ourselves there. There we go. Oh, well, that's bringing down my relative velocity. How can burning towards the target reduce my relative velocity with the target? Let's burn on the relative prograde vector. Let's try that. Again, reducing my relative velocity. That doesn't make any sense. Oh my gosh. Wait a second. Hang on here. Okay, wait. Let's point ourselves at the target again. Move that over. That is not pointing towards the target. Oh dear. Okay, select the uh, capsule here. Control from here. Oh, for goodness sakes. I had that cockpit that I had slung under me selected as my control from here point. All the navigation was based on that. Oh my goodness. And I am now well under 50 meters per second of delta V left. Okay, let's just burn at the target. I got to increase my velocity. I got to get going in the right direction. At least now I am going in the right direction. Oh, wow. What should have been a routine rendezvous is now turning into a bit of an adventure. So I'm just trying to pull that prograde vector towards the target icon and get myself going in the right direction. Or conversely, the retrograde vector onto the target icon. Either way will work. Okay, let's see what we got now. 0.2 kilometers. Okay, I need to get that down further. Burn a little more. Okay, zero. Zero, but a uh, relative velocity of 14.8 meters per second and only 14 meters per second of delta V left. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> this is becoming entirely a habit. I had the issue with the Korion running out of fuel during a rendezvous, and now this, where I had fuel up the wazoo, and if you were watching last episode, I wasted so much fuel. Oh, if you wanted an an, uh, an example of how to retrieve some debris from the surface of Minmus in an efficient way, well, just do everything I'm not doing. <laughs> this is not... Oh, well, I mean, I do have uh, the Karayan 2 and a crew for it, on the station, so, and I should be able to get my relative velocity really low. But uh, what I need to do is get in really close. I gotta make sure I don't crash into the station, but it does look like I'm going to be passing below the station now, so that's good. Okay, let's just do this. And there we go, we are out of fuel, we are drifting. Oh, let's go to the station and get that, <laughs> chase these guys down. Why on earth are we spinning? I don't care. Just there, undock. I don't have time for figuring out why I'm spinning about. Luckily, our crew was already in the station, or in the uh, vehicle here. All right, let's go get them. And you can see that. After a number of episodes where the engine animation was not working with an upgraded version of Kerbal Interstellar, this animation is back, so that's fantastic. At least something's working right. Again, just burning straight at the target. Get to them before they drift too far away. There we go, that ought to do it. We can do the rest of this with monopropellant. Okay, and as we finish off this docking, I got another mod to show you, a new mod. Really handy little one. Uh, if you take the cursor and hover over a part and press O, the camera focus changes to be centered on that part. I mean, for finding parts on large vessels, this is awesome. Very simple mod, that's all it does. 
Um, it's called Camera Focus Changer, so the name of it pretty much describes exactly what it does do. And if you press O with the mouse not on top of any parts, it goes back to the default, which is the center of mass of the vehicle. Really, really handy. But anyway, now that we are together, it's time to finally bring this mission home and get back to the station. Okay, we're only a few kilometers from home now, ladies. Piece of cake. Hang on. Why is my relative velocity with my target barely changing? Let's increase thrust some more. Um, I'm hardly getting any thrust. Oh, what the heck? Something's up with the engines. Yeah, in fact, if you take a look at my thrust, you will see that my maximum thrust now is only 0 0.03 kilonewtons. That's like almost nothing. In fact, my max acceleration is 0, 0.00. It's not even registering. Oh, what is going on? Something's up with these nuclear engines. Now, some of you have undoubtedly noticed that the engines for the Kegel are still on, and they are pointed in the opposite direction to the direction I want to go. Uh, I'll admit fully, at this point, I hadn't recognized that, but uh, that actually isn't the problem because uh, this vessel has no oxidizer on it. Remember, the Kegel burned up all its fuel, and the Karayan does not hold any oxidizer. It simply uses liquid fuel only as a propellant. And eventually, I did notice that I should be shutting down those engines, but even once that was done, the problem didn't go away. And looking at the data being provided here, we can see some of the issues. Number one, uh, the core temperature of the reactor is at just over 400 degrees Kelvin and falling. And the fact that it's falling makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, with the engines off, it should be increasing. I even uh, retracted the radiators in a vain attempt to keep that temperature up. Uh, no, that reactor is not producing any uh, heat. In fact, if you take a look at the thermal power, you will see it is 0.0, .0 kilowatt thermal units. That makes no sense either. And the final nail in the coffin is looking at the rate at which I'm using up my enriched uranium. It is 0 to 6 decimal places international units per day. In other words, I'm not using up any uranium at all, giving me a ridiculously large number for the current lifetime of my reactor. Uh, for some reason this reactor has turned off. Now the reactors will shut down if they become overheated, but there's no way that was the issue here. Um, I've been running this particular vehicle for quite some time now. No issues whatsoever other than the bit of animation issues with the engines. Um, it's been running fine. If it was going to overheat, it would have overheated a long time ago. No, something is wrong. Uh, so what I did, well, first of all, I did get back to the station using just a monoprop. So it was that. We were able to get our Kerbinauts safely back. And then once back to, oh, the, the, the nuisance didn't end there, I had to put some monoprop back into the Kegel. Kofia had to go out and attach those RCS blocks again so that the Kegel could dock. A real pain in the butt. And then while Glafia was out there, she shut down the reactors on the engines. Now, it takes a while for the reactors to cool down completely. It should take a few days. Uh, once they are cooled down, we will try and restart these reactors once again. See if we cannot build up our core temperature. If we can, well, we might be able to get these folks back home in a timely way. If we can't, well, I'm going to have to get another vehicle out here to rescue them. But in the meantime, they will be sitting comfortably in the station. They have mountains and mountains of life support. That is not going to be an issue. It's taking a while for this contract to finally be completed, but uh, completed eventually it will. And speaking of completed contracts, you know, maybe I should actually show a contract being completed if for no other reason than just for the change of pace. It has been entirely too long since I last launched the Columbia. This is its third mission, and our pilot, Mission Commander Jebediah Kerman, along with one of our newest engineers along for the ride, Wilman, and they of course have a mission that I'll get to in just a bit, but I want to show you the improvement that I made here. 
which is balanced to this particular vehicle quite a bit more. I took off the old Terrier orbital engines that I used to have on the shuttle and replaced them with, here I'll zoom in here and I'll use the camera focus changer once again, pressing O. There we go. We'll focus in here. I've got in here the uh, Mark 55 thud engines and then I use the translation tool to kind of tuck them a little bit in there so they look better. They provide quite a lot more thrust, especially down here in the lower part of the atmosphere. The Terriers really are pretty crappy for that. And make them pretty effective for this. And in fact, they are so effective that I uh, don't even need to put on the RCS during the ascent. Um, see, I don't have RCS now, and it's just tracking that prograde vector just perfectly. Um, by the way, that wasn't uh, me being confident. That was actually an oversight. I forgot to put on the RCS, and I was very, very pleased to realize that this thing tracked just fine all the way up to main engine cutoff. All right, there we are. Periapsis, just over 50 kilometers. But what I want to do is I want to swipe as much fuel from the main booster as I can. Uh, of course, the Columbia here does have a payload that we'll be seeing very, very briefly. But the main mission right now is to actually go up to Kerbin Station. You'll see why in just a moment. All right, so we'll finish off our circularization. And then we'll get rid of the payload. And I'll be getting back to this payload in the next episode, uh, right off the bat probably. But uh, right now, why don't we get ourselves to Kerbin Station, which is the main mission that this thing has. You know, this thing is not just capable of bringing up payloads, it's also capable of bringing them back down. So what we're going to do is we're going to park ourselves down here really nice and close to Wilman's Debris and finally get this thing back down to curb and surface and finish off this particular contract. I mean, I might as well take advantage of this space shuttle and kind of get two missions out of the way at once, you know, waste not, want not. And then we will detach Wilman's debris. And we've got Tamily in there to hold it nice and steady, but ooh, ooh, we're, I think I got the Columbia a little bit too close. <laughs> Okay, let's let's just sort of uh, shuffle sideways a little bit here. Oh, that's the wrong way. There we go. Yeah. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. And like I said, Tamley is going to hold the capsule nice and steady. And then the Columbia, which does have a matching docking port. The docking port in the Columbia is a 0.625 meter docking port junior. So these two should fit together very, very well. And once docked, we'll get Tamley back into the station because I do want to keep her there. I need her as a pilot for an upcoming mission that I haven't quite decided what it's going to be yet, <laughs> but it'll come up at some point. And then Jeb and Wilman will take the Columbia back down to the surface and finish off this particular contract. So I got Tamley back in the station, and I did check this out in the VAB, but uh, this should fit in right. Close the doors. Oops, still have the RCS on. And that's looking pretty good. Yeah. Let's take a look at the underside here. I do not see anything poking through. That looks excellent. All right, so now we're gonna just get ourselves back down to the surface. And uh, this is not quite the same as just descending a capsule. Um. I've never brought this down from this altitude before, so I thought the best thing to do would be to play it safe, get down to an 80 kilometer circular orbit, which is the normal thing from which this thing has descended from in the past, and then descend from there, which all went fine except for the fact that, well, I overshot the KSC a bit, as you can see here, and in my, uh, zest to get turned around I turned around a little bit too quickly and really just lost all my speed and wasn't able to carry my speed and well as you can see here I'm coming up a little bit short ah but nonetheless recovering the vessel wasn't an issue the contract was complete We'll take a look at the payload that the Columbia had dropped off at the beginning of the next episode as well we'll be refurbishing the Korean one uh, 
Perhaps its new mission is going to have to be to rescue our Kerbals in and around Minmus. But that will have to be figured out in a future episode. Until then, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time. Thank you.